And now the Mickey Mouse Club presents The Hardy Boys. Featuring Tim Considine and Tommy Kirk. In the mystery of Ghost Farm. Today's episode, Macy's Wonderful Will. Let's go. Will? What are you talking about? Never mind. Getting back. We've huh? got it. The will. Come on, Eric. Let's get back to town as fast as we can. Yeah, we got to stop by the main road, though, and pick up our bikes where we left them. There, wait. Let me see that. We'll read it to you. Come on, Eric. Hurry. So you found it in the coffee can, huh? Well, I'm not driving any place until you guys tell me where you found this. Hey. To you. Huh? You're going to take care of the animals, it says. Yeah, my twice-removed cousin Eric can use whatever few dollars there is in my insurance. Listen, to... we'll read it to you while you drive, please. <laughs> okay, don't get so excited. Now, maybe it's not a legal will anyway. Huh? What? Well, it might help matters, only... Well, just tell me what you meant by coffee can. Where'd you find this thing anyway? You only went back in the house for a minute, and now you come with it. Now, oh, boys, I'm not leaving here until you explain how on earth you... Listen, Eric, you hired us as your detectives, right? Well, I only sort yes, of... you did. Yeah, and, and a detective doesn't have to reveal his sources of information, does he? And there are ethics like he doesn't even have to tell his client all he knows, does but he? But I wouldn't exactly say he's going to keep him in the dark completely either. All right, well, this is just one of those times, and you'll have to trust us, that's all. Now, oh, boys... Eric, uh... we just can't tell you where we found it. It's genuine, all right. It's it's something that Lacey really wrote a long time ago, and he left in his house to be found later, I guess. That's all. <laughs> okay, I'll drive and you read. Only well, start from the beginning this time, will you? All right, boys, now slow down. Take it easy, huh? Just for heaven's sakes, give him time to think. You two came pouncing in here on him before he had time to even get up the front steps. A coffee cup? Oh, um, please. Oh, come on, Annie. We got to find out what Dad thinks before we go to see Mr. Binks. Oh, I'm glad I got rid of Viola Morton before you two came back here. That's all I can say. Hey, look out. Oh, you know, Annie, things wouldn't be so gallopy if you weren't always shoving food in front of people. Oh, is that so? This is what she wants. You read it, Gertrude. See what you think. Oh, thank you. Well, Dad? Wait. I'll go see how Eric's doing when the phone's off. I said wait. Uh, <clears throat> uh, to whom it may concern. Uh, well, that sounds legal enough, don't you think, Fenton? Aunt Gertrude, please. These are my last wishes in case I shall die. I want the animals saved. All the animals on my farm. So if my twice-removed cousin Eric can use whatever few dollars there is in my insurance to see that they get fed right for the rest of their lives, then maybe he wouldn't mind if I leave him the farm. That's my wishes, Lacey. And that's all there is? We already told you. Well, what I don't understand is, why does Mr. Lacey say maybe Eric wouldn't mind if he made him his heir and left him the farm? Well, I think I can tell you that. Hey! Did you talk to Mr. Binks yet? Yeah, what did he say? Well, I'm afraid, on the telephone at least, Mr. Binks doesn't sound very friendly. I heard his name before. Pretty tough to deal with if I'm thinking of the right man. You are. I barely told him what we wanted. How the boys found Lacey's will, and we wanted to come over right away so we could do something about those animals before morning. When he snorted like a bull and said he was on his way out for the evening and good night. He can't do that. He's just got to talk to us. So he's coming over here instead. Huh? <laughs> yep. Happy or not, he'll be here in less than five minutes. That's great. Terrific. Now, tell me this. This is something I don't understand. Well, the whole thing is really pretty simple. The farm out there is worth so little, I guess Lacey figured I wouldn't want it. But with the insurance to help pay the back taxes, I suppose I could manage to keep things going, for the animals at least. Well, Mr. Binks will know more about that. You want some coffee before he gets here? Well... Oh, I'll get it for you. Oh, thanks. I'll come out with you. Uh, Mr. Burson, uh, why didn't the court give you the farm right away? Uh, after Mr. Lacey's death, that is. Well, I really don't know. Oh. Well, maybe uh, somebody interfered or... Uh... 
Maybe they've just been slow about it. I'm only a second cousin, you see, and uh, they might be looking for other relatives. You know something? Every single time we get a mystery, Dad steps in and takes all the action. You know what I mean? Yeah. Honey, it might not be so bad this time. Who cares about the legal stuff? I mean, we did all the work. If the rest of it's talking from here on, who cares? Sure. And we're still gonna grill that guy Binks and find out why he wanted to get the animals killed so bad. Yeah, and I'll bet he squirms, too. Because now we can stop him. You know something? It's been fun working together on a mystery again, hasn't it? Sure. Yeah, now that we're winning. Uh, I don't mean that. Well, I mean, we're not fighting so much, and you're not always gabbing the girls. Hey, now listen. I'm still a better detective than you are any day. And when it comes to being on the beam... Here he is. What's your name, Mr. Binks? Mr. Binks? Because my name's Joe Hardy, and this is Frank Hardy. And we're the ones that person called you about the will. And... I know, I know. I'll just talk to him and your father, thank you. I just haven't got the time tonight to jabber with you children. Mr. Binks? Yes. Come in, Mr. Binks. Come on, let's get back in the house before he... Wait. Hi. Oh, hello. Frank, please. You like the way this model handles? Oh, it's all right. But it's not as nice as my mother's car in traffic, though. But I guess you just can't beat those sport cars, can you? No, I guess not. Oh, you got a mark here in your front tire, where you hit the curb. Oh, really? Frank, come on. It's not a bad mark. I guess girls like you need lots of practice before you can drive a big car like this. Oh, is that so? Don't let him feed you that. He isn't even old enough to have a license. <laughs> Neither am I. But my father got a permit to give me lessons. This is the first time we've been out. Gosh, he's been promising for months. I didn't make too bad of a mark on the tire, did I? Is your father Mr. Binks? Well, of course. All right. All right, seems all right to me. You come to my office in the morning, and I'll go see the probate judge with you, Eric. It's not a regular will, of course. At least he didn't leave any other. That's been the trouble. He didn't even have a living beneficiary named in his insurance policy. Is that the insurance mentioned in here? Oh, yes. And it'll all go to you now. Just about enough insurance money to pay Lacey's back taxes on the farm, I'd say. In other words, young man, there won't be much left to stick in your pocket. Unless, of course, old Uncle Billy left things we don't know about. Well, just so he didn't leave any debts, that's all. <laughs> and the animals will be cared for. <laughs> yeah, that's the important thing. Oh, just one thing, Mr. Binks. How does it happen you're so mixed up in all this? Good question. I own property out that way. Carried a mortgage and insurance for Lacey once. Paid his taxes sometime. State owes me money. I just want to get things settled, that's all. Been helping the court, but uh, if he wants to take over, that's all right with me. Good riddance. Good night. Mr. Binks, Dad, what's going to happen to the animals? Aren't you going to ask him? Don't worry. We'll call that man Fred and cancel the order for him to come after him. Nobody's going to hurt your animals. Good night. Yeah, but why were you so anxious to have him killed in the first place? We've got an awful lot of questions to ask you. Joe. Never mind, Sonny. It wasn't me personally, just that court order thing. Business is business. But look, I, I, I never asked you where you found that will, did I? Oh, wow. But then who cares where you found it? That's what I mean. So long as it's genuine. I'm sure they'll find out it is when the court checks the handwriting tomorrow. Ah, I don't think that anybody would make a phony document with purple ink. How about that, Hardy? Huh? Oh, scarcely. What? So stop asking questions. Who cares? It's all over and done with. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. I've got to go out and get my car wrecked now. Good night. Good night. Well, that's it, boys. Your case is all over but the shouting. Come on inside. I think this calls for a celebration. Ah, so do I. Hey, he wasn't such a bad guy yet. Frank, listen. 
What if it isn't all over? Suppose the will doesn't save the animals. What if the whole thing is as crooked as... Relax, will you? That guy Binks is sure no crook. you never seen a villain with a daughter, have you? At least not one like her. Yeah, but listen, what about the farmer and us? I mean, maybe we're the real villains. And when they check Lacey's handwriting in the morning... Hey, what are you talking about? You don't think there's anything wrong with that will, do you? I don't know, Frank. I just know I lost my fountain pen out there somewhere. Huh? And it was loaded with the same purple ink. Next episode, Detectives in Trouble.